Yesterday I unboxed the absolutely wonderful 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro. I've been using it for about a day here and there, a few bits and bobs, I've been just setting it all up, getting it the way I like it. And I just thought I'd take this opportunity to make a first impressions video about this computer. It's always very interesting to see what things are going to be like right at the beginning because that initial first impression that you get can often set your mindset for you know a very long time when you're using a product. Of course, some things you have to get used to over time. Um, you know, seeing speed of tasks that you don't do every day, things that may require a little bit of extra time to get your head around, etc., etc. Usability and reliability of the machine over time. Now, of course, I haven't been using this thing non-stop. I've been doing a few other bits and bobs. I haven't been sitting on it for the last 24 hours, but I have spent quite a lot of time with this Mac and I can confirm that it is indeed an absolute beast. I love it. And my first impression, my main first main huge maximum awesome impression is the fact that this is a beautifully magnificent machine. And the thing is with these kind of machines, they've got to the point now where they are indeed an absolute triumph in engineering and design. They are just wonderful tools. They're a pleasure to use. And they're just, for such a complicated piece of technology, they are just pretty much flawless. Now you guys know me, I'm not an Apple fanboy. I use Apple stuff because it works. I use Apple stuff because I like it. And I use Apple stuff for, you know, lots of, you know, other reasons. But I can indeed admit that this is definitely a breathtaking piece of technology. As you can hopefully somewhat see in this ridiculously low light, I have indeed put on my uh, hard case that I got from Amazon. I uh, can't remember the name of it yet again. I forgot it in the unboxing video as well, but it's a very nice case, very smooth. Not sure how long I'm gonna keep it on the computer, but it's protective, I like it, and it doesn't add a lot of bulk. If you can see the side here, it really does not add bulk. I'm actually gonna get my other MacBook Pro to compare the bulk difference. As you can hopefully see, guys, that is a ridiculous difference. And this MacBook Pro, my old one, the 2008 model, isn't exactly a thick laptop compared to your average Windows laptop. Considering it's got an optical drive and its age, etc., etc., it's not a thick laptop by any means. However, this new one just completely demolishes it, and that's with a hard case. Footprint wise, then, the new MacBook Pro is actually a little bigger than the old one, as you can see. But of course, it makes no difference at all, really. Because of the thickness difference, this just feels like a complete smaller machine. And of course, put them next to each other and you can barely tell the difference. So what's it like pretty much jumping four, five, maybe even six years in design from something like this to something like this? I absolutely love this design. That has not changed at all. And this is only first impressions. I've had this guy for a day, so it's very early days. I'll be doing much, much, much more in-depth comparisons. But I can say this design is gorgeous. This design on its own, absolutely wonderful, has its place. Same with this one. Loved this one, love this one. Still love this one, but it's not my daily use portable computer anymore. So let's get the old guy out of the frame for now. We will do a much, much bigger comparison video like I just said. Let's get him out of the frame and let's just talk about my new Retina MacBook Pro. So here she is. I've been on one bus journey, one taxi ride, um, and I've pretty much not done very much with it. I've had maybe eight, nine hours use out of it. Mainly all of that was installing my applications and doing all my settings and everything like that, just to get it all sorted. And I can honestly say, so far so good, guys. No hiccups, no trouble, no problems, no crashes, no freezes, no beach balls, nothing. It's just perfectly buttery smooth. And I did all of that on pretty much one charge. I think I had the MagSafe plugged in for about half an hour in between, but I've only done two battery cycles and that's including the one that it came with because yes, it does come with a brand new battery. If you buy a refurb unit, it's pretty much a brand new unit. So here we are at my desktop and you guys can see that I've pretty much installed most of the software that I need on the road with the exception of a few smaller apps 
and as well as the Adobe Suite, where I primarily only use Photoshop anyway. So if we just take a quick scroll over the dock then, um, we've got the basic Apple applications that I just, you know, that I use. I use Calendar and Reminders, uh, Twitter, Mail of course, Skype, Google Chrome. Now I did want to talk about Google Chrome. Hopefully they'll update it soon to become a lot more efficient. Um, I noticed that it's a big, big drain on the battery. I did install one of these, um, well, how do you get to, there we go. I did install one of these battery management programs. It's called Battery Health. That seems to be the most popular one on the App Store and it tells you exactly what each application is using and stuff. And um, according to that, Google Chrome is pretty much the biggest drain on the battery. And Safari is much more streamlined and much more efficient. But I just love Chrome as a browser. I've used it for years now and I've everything, you know, I've got an Android phone. Everything's really Googled up with me. I use Gmail, blah, blah, blah. I love the integration. You know, integration is really nice and important. You know, like the integration between iCloud and Macs and iOS devices and all this stuff. I kind of like the Google integration. Um, so Chrome is ideal for me, but if it presents itself as too much of a battery issue, then I will have to switch to Safari unless they can update that soon. Um, but as far as applications go, that's the only thing I've noticed so far. And of course, that's not the fault of the machine. That's Google's fault. We've got sort of Spotify, QLab. We've got the two um, pro apps that I'll be using on the road, Logic Pro 10 and Final Cut 10. Logic Pro 10, I haven't downloaded all of the additional content yet. Um, I quit it during installation because it downloads gigabytes upon gigabytes of data, so I need to do that overnight. Um, I use Logic 9 upstairs on the G5. I installed Logic 10 as a sort of experiment right now, just to see how easy it will be to jump between the two. I doubt it'll be very easy, so it's highly likely I'll be putting Logic 9 on this system, as long as Logic 9 is indeed supported by Yosemite. Uh, if not, then I may have to start using this guy in the studio, but hopefully not because I really do enjoy the G5 system upstairs. Final Cut Pro 10, of course, I'm doing five videos a week now, so sometimes I haven't got a chance to edit at home on my Mac Pro, so it's handy to have Final Cut Pro 10 on the road. Handbrake, I use it for all of my conversions on the road, pretty much including YouTube videos. Uh, I've got the Toast Titanium 10 suite installed. I don't own Toast 11 yet, I don't know if it's worth the upgrade. Worth the upgrade uh, splash out, I can't remember how much it is, but Toast 10 is working great for me. Um, I've also got the uh, high definition plugin for that iWork of course, I've also installed Office um, because I use Excel to manage all of my finances. And then coming over we've just got basic applications, um, screen sharing so that I can access my server via screen sharing if you know the file system isn't enough. And then of course uh, transmission for torrents and that's pretty much it. So it's a very very clean Mac. I haven't saved any files on here yet that I need um, but I will be doing that at the, at the same time as setting up Time Machine with my portable 750 gigabyte Western Digital Passport drive. So I actually clicked on the wrong thing. I wanna go into About This Mac just to show you guys how much space I've used with installing all of these apps. Now remember, I haven't installed the Adobe stuff yet and I haven't installed the all the Logic plugins that I use. But uh, as you can see, we've still got quite a bit of space left. We've got 209.13 gigs, so about 209 gigabytes free, which is not bad at all. I carry a 750 around with me, so I've pretty much got a terabyte on the road, and that is plenty for me. I've even got a load of films and TV shows stored on that external drive, um, you know, just for entertainment purposes and stuff on the road. But yeah, that is phenomenal, and I'm really pleased with it. Of course, my old MacBook Pro had a 250 gigabyte hard drive, so it's not that big of a difference going from that to this. It's the exact same amount of storage, but of course, I get the speed with this guy, and the speed is just unreal. If I launch any kind of application, it just pops straight up. Everything just pops right there. You wanna launch your browser, it just pops right up. You know, and anything, even stuff that normally takes a little while to launch, like Spotify, you just press it, boom, it's right there. Everything is really speedy, and you can just keep doing this over and over again with every application and it does not let you down. Things like App Store that take ages on my Mac Pro that has an SSD just pops straight up here. Now, it's just absolutely magnificent doing all of this. As you can see, ooh, that's the first one. That went for biggest two bounces, disk util, system prefs. Everything is just super, super speedy at launching because that 
PCIe based SSD storage is just so, so quick and I absolutely love it. Now I've still got a bit of syncing to do with my calendar and whatnot, getting everything sorted. Mail is pretty much sorted just about the way I like it. Now iTunes at the moment is indeed empty, completely, completely empty. And that's because I haven't yet transferred my music. I have a slightly different library uh, on the road to the library that I have at home. I have a lot more music that I wouldn't listen to on the road with me. You know, a lot a lot of the, the current pop stuff and everything, just in case I need it at gigs. Um, it's always handy. So I will be putting about 100 gigabytes of music on this thing um, on the internal storage, which will take up the internal. So my plan hopefully will be 100 gig of music, that'll give me about 100 gigs free, 109 gigs free. After installing the Adobe stuff and the Logic content and all the extra applications that I need that I haven't installed yet, I'm hoping that I'll have 80 gigabytes of space to work with. Most of my big files are on the external and that's where they'll stay. Things like Word documents and whatnot aren't very important, you know, they're not, they don't count, they're not big. And of course, um, I have a lot of stuff in my Dropbox also because I, I'm very, very Dropbox orientated. I've got about four gigabytes of Dropbox uh, content to stream down to this computer again, but yeah, that's no biggie at all. Something that I really like about this system is USB 3.0. This is my first ever laptop with USB 3. I can't remember if my 17-inch MacBook Pro 2011 had USB 3. It might have done actually. But anyway, I now have a USB 3.0 750GB drive, like I keep mentioning, and it's great. It's really nice to have that added extra little bit of speed transfer um, in order to access my files quicker and do all the necessary bits and bobs with that hard drive. I really like USB 3. Um, I wasn't, you know, fussed on the start, I didn't really care, but now I can really see the benefits of the extra speed if you've got the peripherals to take advantage of it. So of course, one thing that I don't have is Firewire, and Firewire is crucial for me on the road. If I need to record any gigs or retrieve files off a Firewire disk that someone gives me for a project, or even retrieve files from a camcorder that uses Firewire only, I really, really need Firewire. So of course, Thunderbolt to Firewire adapter will need to be purchased ASAP with me and I will indeed be getting a Thunderbolt to Ethernet adapter also just in case I need a much speedier network integration in a situation that doesn't have Wi-Fi. Um, also it would be handy for me as well if I'm ever doing you know big backups or whatnot. I'm not sure if I'm going to take Time Machine on the road with this thing. I did with my last MacBook Pro, I had Time Machine on my external drive, but I could probably save a good, a good, a good bit of space if I uh, did Time Machine through my server at home as well. So it might be nice to just hook up via Ethernet once every two or three weeks just to do a Time Machine backup to the server. Um, but that's yet to be seen. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do about that yet. Also, of course, I don't have a super drive and a super drive is quite important to me on the road. Now you might be thinking if all these ports and stuff are so important to you on the road, why did you go for this model? Well, the things like Firewire, Ethernet and a super drive, you don't use them every time you use your laptop. Every time you use your laptop, you use USB ports, you use a trackpad, you use a display, a keyboard, maybe even the headphone jack every time you use it. But of course, things like a super drive and a firewire jack, you really, really only need it when the situation presents itself. So I'm quite happy having an external drive, uh, external super drive in my bag, carrying around with me, slimline, nice little drive, and I'm quite happy to carry around adapters. I really, really, do not mind that at all. So I will need to buy an external CD drive. Whether I get the Apple one or not, I'm not too sure. I'll probably go for a third party. Same with the adapters, just to save a little bit more money. As far as main first impressions go, the screen real estate is absolutely phenomenal. I really, really like it. The quality of the retina display is out of this world. I haven't received any kind of eye strain or fatigue or headaches or anything using this system. It's absolutely wonderful. The display is great. The trackpad is also great. Now, I've never been a big fan of gestures. I don't gloat about gestures. I've never bought or even thought about buying one of those magic trackpads, but it is handy to have these kind of gestures on the trackpad just to do various things. It's a nice, nice thing to have. I missed it when I got rid of my 17 inch MacBook Pro and it's nice to have it back. Now, one thing that I loved on my old MacBook Pro, the one that I've just come from, the 2008, was the keyboard. And I still think that I prefer that old keyboard, but 
doesn't mean this is a bad keyboard. This is a really nice keyboard to type on, and it has a slightly, um, it doesn't have quite as deep a key travel as the old unibody MacBook Pro that I had. I think that's probably because of the thinner case and space restrictions, but I actually like it. And I can type very comfortably and very quickly on this machine. And of course, that'll only increase over time. It'll be really, really nice to use. I like the keyboard a lot. It's probably my second favorite keyboard so far with the laptops that I've owned. Built-in speakers, extremely impressive. Built-in 720p, webcam, whatever they're calling it, FaceTime, EyeSight, whatever, extremely impressive. Everything about it, I really like it. And as far as first impressions goes, after one day of use, which is barely anything, remember, I really like this machine. Now, of course, I will be doing a follow-up with plenty more videos, hopefully a comparison between this and my 2008 MacBook Pro, and a very, very in-depth one at that. Also, I'll do a video one month from now, or maybe a fortnight from now, just discussing the use of this system after I've put it through its paces, actually editing videos, maybe playing a couple of games, uh, doing some Photoshop work, some work in Logic, just so I've got a basic grounds and experience from using all of those applications, at least a little bit, including things like converting videos and, and you know processing videos and just seeing how long all of that kind of thing takes. So this has been my MacBook Pro Retina 15 inch, late 2013, first impressions video. I'm gonna do this nice closing shot. There you have it, and it's got no hard drive in it, so you can move it about straight away without worrying about damaging it, and that is really cool. I've wanted an SSD on the road for a very long time, and I finally got one. Absolutely love this machine so far, guys. It's only been a day, so watch this space. Hope you've enjoyed my first impressions and I'll catch you all in tomorrow's video.